Today I have a great show for you, brimming with ideas and projects. One of the newest, most creative things I have seen is the embroidered bowl. Now that sounds a little strange, doesn't it? However, it is quick and fun to make, making it a perfect gift idea for you. Quilting is still a favorite of ours and we have wonderful quilting ideas to share. Get your notepad ready as we learn new techniques and tips that will make sewing easier and so much fun. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Melody Good. Melody is with Hancock Fabrics and she is the corporate home economist. And we are going to talk about another wonderful title of yours too. Melody coordinates the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital Quilt of Dreams program, which is underwritten by Hancock Fabrics. Melody, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's great to be here. Tell us a little bit about the Quilt of Dreams uh, program. Well, this year will be the fourth year coming up with the Quilt of Dreams program. First year we started out, we had 750 quilts. Last year we were up to 3,500 quilts being donated for the children at St. Jude's. For the children at St. Jude, I'm telling Melanie and I love St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and I have a feeling that everyone watching this show does also the incredible work started by Danny Thomas in the early 60s. And Melody, isn't it the most fascinating place in the world to go and know that these children, the vast majority of them, are being healed today? It's a wonderful. Oh, I'm, it's incredible. Well, let's look at some of these wonderful quilts given by the generosity of women. And a few men make quilts, too, all over the world who have made these quilts to donate to the children of St. Jude. This particular quilt shows the dreams of some of the children. We ask the children to jot down their dreams. They are then submitted, and then we can have those turned out for the people to look at. We wanted to have a child with hair because some of the children dream of having hair again someday. We also have the wonderful people that help them at St. Jude's. Some of them want to be able to be healthy enough to go out and ride the tractors. And there are many, many dreams created throughout on these beautiful growing flowers. You know, I think you was talking about some of the children want to be able to play outside again because they're not able to play outside while they're under treatment. Right. Well, we, we hope and pray all these dreams come true for all of these children. Oh, how beautiful. And these are made from people all over the United States and outside the United States also? We have had a few from Had a outside. few world entries. Oh, tell us about this one. Well, this is one they want to go out and they want to be able to go sailing. So you have the beautiful sailboat over there. Sports is always a big thing that the children want to be involved in, be able to play in the sports. Some of them want to be pilots. So it goes on. They want to be able to ride horses. They want to be race car drivers. They just have a lot of dreams and hopes, things that a lot of us take for granted that they're not able to attain at that particular time, but they're things that they look forward to. But so many of those dreams are coming true for these children, yes, thanks to the uh, research and the work that is being done at St. Jude. Yes. Now this one was an entry, we have an under 18 category, so we have children making quilts for children. Oh. And one of them was, the patient's name was Logan, and he wanted to be able to color. So a child that was under 18, I think she was 16, she designed this quilt to fulfill Logan's dream and made this beautiful crown. So she cut it out, designed it, and has sewn it by herself. Is this wonderful? A 16-year-old yes. made this crayon quilt? Oh my goodness. Oh, how beautiful. And the generosity of women and men around the country contributing these, and I might add Hancock's generosity in coordinating this. This was Daniel's dream. He wanted to be able to ride in a sailboat. So somebody went ahead and did this whole big quilt. Oh. And there is a little silhouette, if you look close enough, on the sailboat of Daniel on the boat. There's Daniel right there. Fulfilling that. And it says Daniel's dream. Oh, right. this just sends chills all over me. And it's just beautiful <gasps> how they've used the fabrics to create the wonderful dreams that you see here. And then the beautiful quilting techniques that have been used. They're all very, very nice and very different. Oh, these are just so wonderful. This again was one made by a child under 18. And again, it was fulfilling Logan's wish of being able to color, but this one was interpreted a little bit differently. They have the crayon with the color, the rainbows, the beautiful butterflies, and they've also used the crayons in the border of the particular Isn't quilt. Isn't that wonderful, the blue and the green, and there's sunshine, a ray of hope and a ray of sunshine at St. Jude. Very, very oh, nice. Oh, Melody, these are so beautiful, and under 18 maybe. This was another on under 18. Oh my goodness. Now this is a quilt that interprets many, many of the wishes and basically our dreams for the contest and for the children at St. Jude. 
Danny Thomas had a wish that someday he would be able to throw the keys of St. Jude into the Mississippi River. And St. Jude's is located in Memphis, Tennessee. So we have the St. Jude's facility up here, and there's a little sign on the front door saying, gone fishing. So we hope that all of these incurable diseases now will be totally cured. So Danny Thomas's dream of throwing those keys in the Mississippi. I remember seeing the video that sends cold chills all over me. And I, we do so hope and pray that will come true. Well, tell us about the rest of these. Well, this was Trevor's dream that he wanted to go fishing. So this is Trevor that you see here. And he has his name on the back pocket where he has the hanky sticking out. It's embroidered. It says How Trevor cute. right there. This represents the water of the Mississippi. And these are the gold keys of St. Jude on this sailboat being going down the Mississippi. Then we have some people that want to play with dogs. So we have that dream designated here. Then we have the names of a lot of children embroidered onto this quilt that have been treated at St. Jude embroidered across this quilt. And then here's a beautiful crazy patch that's in memory and has in memory of some of the children. And there are a lot of other children. So what about the fishing? Was that a dream of going? Yeah, going okay. fishing. So going that's where fishing. you have the fish on the pole. And you can see it's a three dimensional. It just loose on there and then also we have the tail on these fish that are loose but each one of the fish has a different child's name embroidered onto it. Melody, is this uh, a contest or, or this program open to anyone that would like to participate? Yes, so we have different categories and anybody can participate in it. Melody, it's so exciting that you brought these beautiful uh, quilts here that have gone to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis and thank you so much for all of your work with the Quilt of Dreams program. You're welcome. And now we have some exciting scrapbooking or sew booking ideas for you. Melody, I'm thrilled with your with your quilt of dreams sew booking pages. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun putting this together. Okay. <laughs> Basically, we've taken fabrics, cut out designs, and used the St. Jude's fabrics. We've then fuse those in place, then you can stitch around the edge with the bias binding. We've also stitched, and ball fringe right now is very popular, so we've stitched the ball fringe with a wide zigzag stitch down the cover. Then we've used some machine embroidery and embroidered a ribbon to then glue in place on the outside of our album. Next we've used some fabrics and we've got this ready where we could then do some decorative stitching in the center of the little flowers that we have for the St. Jude Quilt a Dream page. This one we've added some of the novelty trims and these novelty trims have been placed on place with some little glue and then you go back and you stitch that in place adding a little more color and decoration to them. Again we've added some swirls with some stitching. This represents one side of one curtain where we had all the quilts on here for the Quilt of Dreams. Many many of them have been pinned and stitched in place for decorating the Colosseum. Next we have another page and again we could do some machine embroidery and then cut out the appliques and glue those in place and again add the photos for our book. This one shows some of the fabric design for the St. Jude's Research Hospital and we have then glued that in place and some of the sunshine designs representing the book also. And this one we just have different people that have helped us with the St. Jude's presentation. And we've used machine embroidered stars, cut those out, and then we have glued those in place to finish off the page. You know what, I just think it is so much fun to just use either just your regular stitches if you have a very simple sewing machine and to use embroidery stitches if you have the embroidery machine. But this whole scrapbooking thing or sew booking is so much fun to think about our sewing machines and our beautiful threads and our trims. It's another creative way of expressing yourself. Maybe it you're not is. a garment constructor, but you can also sew and create. That is pieces. exactly right. Melody, thank you so much for being here. I just love having you here as always. Mm -hmm. And next I have a so quick project for you.
this machine embroidered basket is fabulous. Now, if you will look, you will think, well, goodness me, I, I, if I don't have a large size uh, embroidery hoop, I can't do that basket. That's wrong. This basket is done just with the small flowers. You see the yellow rose and the, the brown rose and the pink rose and the leaves. They're all made individually. Sometimes the leaves are made with the flowers, but these are made on a small hoop. And if you'll notice carefully the gold threads that are peeking through, well, there's a little secret to that. Let me turn it over. If you tighten the top tension, the metallic thread, which the metallic thread was in the bobbin, if you tighten the top tension, then the metallic thread will pull through and just make these wonderful, wonderful metallic looking roses. Now let's see how this is done. The first thing is to embroider your rose on uh, on this very heavy uh, stabilizer. It's almost it almost feels like something you would do paper dolls to make them stand up. It's a very very heavy stabilizer. And the second idea is you must choose a flower that does not have a lot of little wispy branches. You see this big solid rose right here that has leaves on it. it has just a nice sort of a round outline. You can't use one that has little bitty lots of little bitty flowers that come out of it. All right, after you embroider your roses, and you can do some with leaves and some without leaves, and here we have pink leaves. Now, after you embroider it, a real critical thing is to put seam sealant. Before you cut the roses out, you put seam sealant all the way around the outside of the embroidery embroideries that is and let them dry thoroughly then after I've already cut these out but then after the seam sealant dries then you come in and very carefully cut and and with the seam sealant even if you did make one little clip because you have to cut real closely it's still going to be just fine now then after you uh, get these together you're going to put the make the bottom and just zigzag them or straight stitch them whichever one you choose to do you take your pieces one at a time and make the bottom of your bowl and you can overlap a little bit then when you begin to do the top of the bowl i brought the bowl back up here you're going to put them just arrange the flowers and you kind of just pull it up and then you might want to also put it actually over a bowl shape and, and you, it becomes very pliable when you mash it around a little bit but you kind of shape it and then you sew your different flowers and you build it up with that wonderful stabilizer. And next I have a home decorating project for you. This Madeira medallion tea towel is so gorgeous. I cannot wait to show you how pretty it is. And the techniques really are not that hard to do at all. This handkerchief linen towel is done in a beautiful white and the medallion, which is done with the magic Madeira technique, which you've learned that one before and I'll refresh your memory, is so beautiful. It has machine embroidery. These are roses in the middle, but wouldn't that be beautiful with the monogram? And then there's gimp work around the outside. Oh, that's so pretty. Then there's a beautiful green border on the bottom. Once again, there is some machine work, some machine embroidery work. But if you don't have a machine that embroiders, it'd be just beautiful just to have a plain green border on it. Now, now we're going to talk about the different techniques on this beautiful Madeira medallion tea towel that is just, it looks like it came out of an Italian uh, linen shop to me it's so beautiful now the first thing we're going to do here's the green piece you're going to mark the center not with a black magic marker the way I've done it but you're going to mark the center piece and do your embroidery whether it's this a beautiful rose like we have here or whether it's a maybe an initial or monogram would be beautiful too then in order to do the magic Madeira I need a piece of waste fabric of some kind to go on top of of this green here I've just got a piece of white organdy and as you can see the beautiful template this scallopy template has been traced on the waste fabric now why do I have the marks also on the waste fabric well, I'm going to have to cut them in order to turn it right side out after I stitch. Now then, this is a very magic ingredient on this Magic Madeira. When I stitch on these lines with a very short straight stitch, because when I go around those little curves and into those points, I want it to be short, I must use wash away basting thread as I straight stitch around this line. And then the next most critical thing is, after you do the straight stitching, remove this wash away basting thread from either your top or your bobbin, whichever place you put it, and either place will be fine. Remove it, get it back in this little plastic bag and put it away. All right, we've stitched through the waist cloth. 
Now the next step is to come in, now remember, remove that wash away basting thread. Then I'm going to come in and trim very carefully, oh, about a quarter of an inch seam allowance to the straight stitching. And after I trim it all away, then I'm gonna come back in and clip the curves and be ever so careful not to hit the stitching, of course. I'll clip the curves. Now, I've got to make some clips in the waste fabric also in order to turn it right side out. Okay, after you make those little clips, this time it was organdy, turn your linen, your beautiful piece you've already made right side out. Now, this is important too. I'll then take some spray starch after I've turned it right side out and it's just perfect. I'll take spray starch and wet it with spray starch and then very quickly press till dry, press till dry, press till dry or you will cry. I mean you press it bone dry after you have sprayed it with spray starch. You know what that spray starch did? It dissolved those stitches and then after you press it till it is bone dry you can then pull it apart and this is why it's called Magic Madeira. See, I pull it apart if I've pressed it till it is bone dry, and then I have this gorgeous Madeira piece, and I'll press it once again just to be sure it lays down exactly right. Now you see, that piece is going to go right here on my towel. Okay, next step is to place that Madeira piece on my towel. I also, it's time to sew my green band to the bottom of the towel. And by the way, if you want to do this beautiful embroidery on your green bottom border, do that before you sew it on because that needs to be done through just one layer. Then I'm going to sew it at the bottom. I will come in and Madeira stitch around here, around the green piece. I will sew the bottom and I will get ready to flip it back up. Now I've already stitched. You can use your pin stitch if you have a pin stitch or just a teeny tiny zigzag if you don't. I'm going to use some gimp cord and either if you have a gimp foot, great. If you don't, just hold it or put it through a cording foot. I'm going to just zigzag over the gimp cord all around those outside areas. And I will tell you, I think, I don't think I've ever seen a prettier tea towel than this one right here. And really with the Magic Madeira, it isn't so hard to do. And now I have some hand embroidery for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Sheldrick. Beverly is a contributor to So Beautiful magazine. She also teaches at the School of Art Fashion in Huntsville, Alabama. She has taught needlework the world over, and Beverly, it is a real joy to have you here today. Thank you, Martha. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. Now, Martha, today for our viewers, um, we, in every garden, you've got to have a little bit of height. And so today we're going to be doing these twisted spires that we have here. And you can see that there is another one over here, just in a different color, a bit like delphiniums. You need them, they come in different colors. And very, very simple, really. Now, when we look at the board here, you will see that I started with just a straight stitch on an angle. Then the second one comes approximately halfway down and it's actually twisted. Now I am going to show you how to do this because it's a little bit hard for you to see just how they're done. But you can see I've got, there's my second stitch. The third stitch is just going to be here. And I'm really going to be continuing to use the same stitch all the way around. But to get width, then you have a, a lesser distance between the two. If you want them narrower, then of course you have a longer distance. And you can see with this one how they've just um, changed. They've become a little more full here and then coming down here. And of course the stems is just a straight stitch and then the two long stitches, one always a little longer than the other, to form the base of this flower. Now you can see that here I am, I'm putting in that first straight stitch like that and you will notice that I'm just going to take that over, over my finger and then if I slide that down like that, that helps to keep it from twisting. So there we are, not too tight. Now I'm coming over to here like this approximately halfway down. Now what I'm going to do, Martha, is this. I'm going to just 
you can see I'm taking it over my finger and I'm actually twisting it so that here we are, we're bringing this down like that to where I want it to go. Now I'm going to actually spike this and take it through like this. This is what gives them the bounce. I'll take that through like that, but then when I come up, I'm going to come up actually just above where it went down. So make sure you don't come up in the same hole again because you've lost it. <laughs> so here we go, we're coming up once more and it is a wise idea to keep your finger on it there because it can pull through if you want to. It's this last stitch that makes it a little bit more stable. So what I'm going to do now, this time of course, I'm going to twist it the other way. And you can see how it's just gone to the side like that. So once more, put on my needle. I'm, I don't know whether you can see just how far this is, but it's only approximately about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch like that, where I'm taking that needle through like this. And you can see, so there it is at the moment, it's not secure, so I'm actually going to put my finger on it just to hold it so that when I come up again, and of course you don't want to spike your finger, <laughs> you know, it happens very easily. You can see the finger is actually holding that down like that. And it sometimes just doesn't want to come through. So there I am, I'm now going to twist it once more to this other side like that. If you want a really big one, of course, to do them in seven millimeter ribbon can be very, very um, attractive, but it does give you a very heavy spire. And for this, I didn't want it to be too heavy. So there I am just taking it through like that. And then putting my finger on it, I'm just going to bring it up again like this. And we're just going to continue wobbling from <laughs> side to side, you know. And also, you will see that if I want, now this ribbon is just twisting a little bit on me, but I'm, we're not going to worry about that. We'll just take this over and under and like that. Now, if I want it to be uh, narrower, then I bring this in closer like that. If I want it to be very wide, then I'll put it wide like that. And you can see, you will keep on going to the length I want. And then of course, we'll just put in our straight stitches like this. Let's just make it. It's easy enough to just whistle across like this, and that will form that base to it. But it's just a matter of, as I say, just working your way down there. They take a little bit of time, but and it's whistle, worth it. And whistle. And whistle, and whistle from Never side to side. I love your scratches. <laughs> just whistle that stalk from side to side. <laughs> Beverly, thank you so much. And now I'd like to share one of my vintage garments with you. to say one thing that my beautiful Victorian clothes have in them over and over and over and over and over again, it would be tucks, pin tucks, folded tucks. And the other thing that I would tell you about would be embroidery, beautiful, beautiful white on white embroidery. This dress is spectacular. It was made somewhere around 1900. And it was just so interesting how this lady was such a designer. She put her, her uh, Swiss embroideries at an angle, her French lace, and these wonderful rows of pin tucks. And she had to fold those pin tucks because she did not have any double needles the way we have today. Now this embroidered piece in the center was a pre-embroidered panel that came from Switzerland. They made wonderful pre embroidered panels in order to insert them in the dress. Now this lady, uh, you can see she had a really pretty waistline treatment too, but let's go on down to the skirt. She had wonderful, just row after row after row of teeny tiny pin tucks, and then uh, one of these pre-purchased panels. You see it was pretty narrow, so she had to insert it between two something else's. And if you look at the center, you will see she used wider tucks, a 
oh, those are maybe uh, a quarter inch tucks so separated by maybe a half an inch. And then all the way down to the bottom. Now this is very interesting. I'm going to hold the skirt up. Now you see her pre-purchase panel was only so long. So what she had to do was to choose something else for the bottom of this dress because her panel would not go down to the bottom. So what did she choose? She chose some more beautiful tucks. As is traditionally the case with these gorgeous, gorgeous clothes, they are just as beautiful on the back as they are on the front. Although she did not have any more of the pretty pre-purchased panels, so she used row after row of tucks, and also you see she hid her buttons. This enclosed placket was fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. Won't you be with me next time?